land plots underneath rail viaducts, next to Ishuan and Choa Chukong MRT stations, may be leased out for commercial or community use in the coming years, if a study shows such a project is viable. The Land Transport Authority LTA called a tender on January 19 for a property valuer to assess open market rental rates for the two sites in Ishuan and Choa Chukong, each measuring about 5. 000 SQM in land area. The site in Ishuan is a narrow strip of land starting near Block 749 Ishuan Street 72 and ending near Block 757 on the same street. The space in Choa Chukong is split into three plots, one near Keat Hong Community Club, another near Block 346 Choa Chukong Loop and a final segment near Block 345 Choa Chukong Loop. Responding to queries, LTA said it and the Ministry of Transport are exploring the possible use of sites next to MRT stations as part of efforts to increase vibrancy around the stations. The study is still at an early stage, so issues such as land ownership will be considered later if LTA decides to, or is able to, proceed with the project, it added. According to tender documents, the land plots in Ishuan and Choa Chukong are marked for the study comprise state land and housing board on land. The plots are also managed by various government agencies. At the Ishuan site, for instance, there is a park connector running through it that the National Parks Board oversees. Asked about the commercial or community purposes it envisages the sites will be used for, LTA said it plans to consult stakeholders such as relevant government agencies, social and business entities, and local grassroots advisors if it decides to proceed with the project. According to tender documents, LTA's plan is to lease out each site to a prospective operator who will pay rent to the authority and sublet spaces at each location to tenants. The prospective operator will have to bear the cost of civil, electrical and mechanical works to fit out the site so that it is in a rentable condition. These works are estimated to cost $7.04 million for each location. LTA said in its tender that the rent it intends to charge will correspond to the value of each site and take into account the project term and capital expenditure borne by the operators. The plan is for construction at the two sites to start in January 2025 and last until 2027. The sites will be occupied for a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of 20 years, inclusive of the two-year construction period. The appointed property valuer is expected to provide LTA with analysis and advice on open market rental rates for the two sites based on these parameters and overall market conditions. The valuer will also have to carry out a comparative study of equivalent properties. In its reply to the Straits Times, LTA noted that similar projects under viaducts have been introduced successfully in countries such as Japan. One example is the Kogan Echo area in Yokohama, where a 100m stretch of land beneath a train overpass was turned into a meeting space, an open-air piazza, an art studio, an art gallery and a cafe, among other things. It is not the first time LTA has mooted repurposing the space underneath rail viaducts. In 2022, for instance, it proposed turning a section of the rail viaduct near Tanamera MRT station and the space below it into a green corridor for walking and cycling after the one-kilometer stretch is withdrawn from use in 2026. In November 2023, LTA made an open call for ideas from the public and the agency is in the process of reviewing submissions. In addition, the authority is looking at how it can repurpose Changi Depot, which houses trains after it is replaced by the upcoming East Coast Integrated Depot for trains and buses in 2025. Ideas for this were also sought during the 2023 open call.
Mr. Michael Leong. Deputy Chief Executive of architectural firm SAA Architects, said that leveraging underutilized spaces beneath rail viaducts is a step in the right direction, considering Singapore's land scarcity. There are exciting opportunities to create inclusive spaces that cater to a diverse range of activities and users, such as flea markets, art galleries, farming plots, or social enterprises. He added. Ms. Ray Krishna, head of the Singapore Smart Mobility Department at consultancy firm Rambol, said the rent for such spaces under viaducts may be more affordable for small businesses that are just starting out and testing their commercial viability. From a safety aspect, these areas will no longer be quiet and gloomy when they have a purpose, she added. Chua Chu Kong GRC MP Zalkanen Abdul Rahim welcomed LTA's plans to develop the spaces underneath rail viaducts in his Keat Hong ward, as this will maximize their use. He pointed to existing infrastructure, such as a water playground underneath the LRT viaduct near Keat Hong Community Club and the pop up space next to it, where young people can learn about science, technology, engineering art and mathematics. He also noted that the LRT and MRT viaducts in Choa Chu Kong connect to Tembusu Park, which is being rejuvenated. There is potential to create a seamless corridor of community and commercial spaces, he said. Nay Soon GRC MP Muhammad Faisal Ibrahim said that LTA's project will complement plans to rejuvenate Nay Soon. Noting that the proposed issuance site is near key transport nodes with high foot traffic. It is a smart way to turn their space into something functional and new, a place for people to come together. Make new friends and strengthen existing bonds, added Associate Professor Facial, who is also Minister of State for Home Affairs and National Development.